This podcast is part of the C-Suite Radio Network, turning the volume up on business. We all know most executive level positions are not posted or advertised. So the big question is this, if those 100K plus jobs are not posted or advertised, how do you go about your job search in a way so you can find the right companies, connect with the right people, and land your next ideal opportunity as quickly as possible and without compromise? That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. My name is Chris Kirkpatrick, and welcome to Executive Job Search Secrets. Hey, it's Chris Kirkpatrick with the Executive Job Search Secrets podcast, and for this episode, uh, it's going to be a little bit different. You probably can hear the audio is a little bit different because I'm actually not in my studio right now. I'm I'm uh, on a road trip, and when I travel, uh, as you can probably imagine, I listen to a lot of podcasts myself. I listen to a lot of YouTube videos, and I'm always uh, trying to just kind of push myself forward. I'm I'm one of those people who is not huge on watching TV. I'm I'm a big believer that if I have downtime, I want to spend that time reading, learning, growing, uh, watching YouTube, lis- listening to podcasts, a lot of TED Talks, stuff of that nature. Um, you know, and, and so on this trip, I've been listening to a lot of stuff and I came across a video uh, by Simon Sinek. And if you don't know who Simon Sinek is, he wrote the book, um, Start With Why. He also uh, wrote the book, uh, Great Leaders Eat Last. Um, and he's written a couple other books, but he's just an amazing keynote speaker. Uh, he's just a phenomenal person, uh, I- at least as far as I see it, and, and, and how he's impacted me. Um, <clears throat> I've learned a lot from him, and, and his stuff just makes sense. And he comes at it from a pretty unique angle and gives really good perspective on leadership. And make no mistake about it, right? You're, you're, if you're listening to this, chances are you're looking to advance your career. My guess is you're looking for some sort of leadership position. And let's face it, I mean... My belief is we're all leaders in life. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're leading your company, if you're leading your family, um, if you're leading your friends, uh, whatever. We all uh, need to look at life, I think, from that perspective that we are in a, a position of influence and leadership because we have people in our lives that are looking for that. So kind of getting on track here, um, there, there, there's some things I picked up today that really, uh, I'm, a, I'm very much a process kind of system-oriented mindset in person. Uh, and there's there's some uh, things I picked up, and I was I was pulling over constantly, taking notes and just jotting things down. That I was like, oh, that makes sense. I got to share that with people. Oh my gosh, that <laughs> you can apply that to to the job search world and like the the mindset because it's funny. All these there are all these leadership gurus. Let's call them out there. There are all these people who uh, think of what to do from a leadership perspective in the context of how to grow a business, how to lead your team, how to be a better manager, how to how to do all these different things, how to be a better CEO. But not many people are coming at it from the perspective of how to go about your job search, right? And and so I wanted to put together, uh, and what I did basically is, is I got these four things. So let's call them four rules uh, uh, for sparking success in your job search, right? So, so first things first is rule number one to spark your job search that I heard that I took down for notes is go after what you want, right? It, it's such a mindset thing. There's so many people in this world that see what they want, right? Like when I look at successful people, it's kind of that glass half full, glass half empty, glass half empty kind of mindset, right? Is the, do you do you see the glass glass is half full or half empty? Um, and, and it's the mindset of when you get into your job search, you kind of have to have that confidence uh, to go after what you want. And, and I find that a lot of times people don't have that mentality. You're, you're either the kind of person that sees what you want or you're the person who sees what's holding you back, right? And, and <clears throat> you know, Simon actually did a, a talk and he was, he was talking about uh, standing in line and um, being at this marathon and at the end of the race, you know, they have these sponsors and the sponsors provide bagels or something else. But at this, in this specific instance, it was bagels. And there was this huge line and, and there was this rule that, you know, you had to stand in line and the line was so long. And, he, and, and Simon was like, why, why, does, why is everybody standing in line? And they're like, well, this is just the way it is. And he's like, well, 
I, I don't have the time to stand in line. I don't want to get a bagel. So he just walked up and grabbed a couple bagels. And his mindset and, and what he said was like, I could either go grab the, the give and take of that is I could grab the bagels on the fly and I, I went after what I wanted. I wanted a bagel that the give on that, like what he, what he couldn't have is he didn't have a selection of what kind of bagel, what flavor of bagel he was going to get, right? He knew he wanted a bagel. He knew he didn't want to stand in line. And so then he went up and he just went in, ducked it, you know, stuck his hand in the bag and grabbed and came out with two random bagels. And so he got what he wanted. He was okay with that compromise. And so my, my the, the reason I think that's relevant for your job search is that you got to really know what you want and you got to go after what you want and you have to view it through the lens of really doing anything you have. You can't, uh, anything you have to do to get there and understanding that you're probably what's got you where you are right now isn't going to get you where you want to go, right? That's that's like everything. We got to constantly, constantly be learning and growing. And so when it when it comes to this, what got you where you are in your career to this point in time, it's probably going to take a little bit of growth for you to get to the next level. And that's completely normal. Uh, and it's expected, in fact. Um, so that's rule number one is go after what you want. Rule number two is ultimately take credit and also take accountability for your situation. You know, I, I, I talk to a lot of people, a lot of executives every single day. And if you want to be successful in your search, it's really important to, to take accountability because no matter how successful you are, no matter how, how good you are at what you do, uh, how effective you've been, the positive results you've had, you know, you are where you are for a reason. Um, there's, there's always obviously extenuating circumstances that have led company mergers, uh, new, new leadership coming in, bringing in their own team, basically kind of cutting you out of the equation, <clears throat> all those different things. But the bottom line when it comes to this is you have to take accountability for your results. And, you know, even if it wasn't at your last position and knowing how to kind of go through that, it's, I, ta- I, I can't tell you how many people I talk to that say, listen, I should have got this job. I've interviewed for this job. I would have been the perfect fit for this and I didn't get it. It's not fair. It's not right. It's like, it doesn't make any sense. Well, the reality, the only variable in all the equations, if you, if you approach multiple jobs and I don't want to sound heartless, I don't know your specific situation, but the fact is the only variable in the equation in all the different opportunities you've looked at is you. And so that doesn't mean you're not worthy. That doesn't mean you're not capable or qualified or anything of that nature. But it does mean there's something missing on your end. It does mean that, you know, even if you are all these things, it might mean you're just not communicating it effectively. Um, And so you need to figure out where those gaps are, where those holes are, and what you need to do to fix those and and to more effectively communicate or, uh, or, or, you know, fill the void of whatever it is that's holding you back. And that could be a plethora of things, or it might be one or two things. It doesn't, sometimes it's, it's the smallest things that make the biggest difference and that can make all the difference in the world. So that's number two is take credit, but also take accountability. So number three is, um, basically you need to get really good at helping the person to your left and to the, and the person to your right. Uh, leadership, you know, is, is all about um, helping people, lifting people up, making the people around you better. Um, this, I always, I always kind of talk to people, your job search is not about you. <laughs> it's always about the other person. It's always about the hiring manager. It's always about the company. It's always about the leadership in the company and your ability to help them solve a problem, right? And so the best way uh, to do that is to effectively show that you're a leader, that you're somebody who wants to help the person to your left and to your right, that you like to serve and help and that you are a servant leader. I mean, that's kind of a cliche statement, but it's one of those things that anybody can say, few people are able to do effectively, right? And so <clears throat> what I what I would say is this, that when you're on your job search, networking is the most effective thing that you can do. Now, a lot of people are scared of networking. A lot of people don't network because they don't know 
what to do. They don't know how to network effectively. They don't know how to have clear calls to action, clear requests for help. Um, you know, th- there's there's no more powerful word than help in this world. And, and sometimes our egos and, um, you know, our pride gets in the way of being willing to ask for help, right? Because probably you're in a position and you've been in a position throughout your career where you've been the person that people come to for help. So it's a really uncomfortable uh, paradigm shift for you to be in a position where you're gonna, you're you're in the position asking people for help. But you'll find that there are ways that you can do that. And there's there's nothing wrong with being humble and being a servant leader, being humble, being willing to help people even when you're out of work, showing that leading by example, that is going to be a key to your success. And the only way to do that is by networking effectively and not networking with any i with any uh, objective of getting them to help you but networking with you getting to help them i mean it's it's no different I, it sounds so simple and it is so simple it's not necessarily easy but the best way to get somebody to ask you what you do for work is to ask them what they do for work the best way to get somebody to help you is to help them first because then they're going to feel like they owe you and you don't want to do this from the perspective of that they're you know you're doing it for them so they owe you one you're not keeping tally you're not doing any of that stuff but anything of that nature but you are just going out and serving people you're helping people I mean let's face it what else do you have to do you're in between work probably if you are especially you can go out there you can help people you can serve people and it's gonna it's gonna build your brand that's gonna become a big part of how your brand is perceived in the marketplace and then when opportunity comes up what are they gonna do they're gonna ask how they can help you and you can then give a clear call to action a clear request for help on how they can help you but it's so much more effective for you to have help them first because now you've built trust with them you've built you, you you've shown them that you're somebody that doesn't just say I'm a servant leader you've proved it right? You've done it. You've led by example. So they don't have to ask you about that. You don't have to make that statement and sound self grandiose, right? It's, it, it, it is what it is. It speaks for itself. So being a servant leader, helping the person to your right, to your left, and having that mindset, that is rule number three to spark success in your job search. Now, rule number four, um, this is a great, a great one. And I think it's super important and it's so straightforward. And I think we all kind of know this, but it's hard to implement and execute. And I can I can tell you honestly that I'm not always the best at this and I don't I don't know anybody that is the best at this all the time, but I think it's key for us to all consciously focus on it. And that is always ask questions to seek clarity. Um and and that on its own is one thing, but you know, it, it, there's a lot of leaders around the world and a lot of different countries have different opinions about who's the best leader or whatever, but kind of almost world renowned uh, universally, Nelson Mandela is viewed as uh, probably one of the most effective leaders in the history of mankind. And, And when asked about what made him such an amazing leader, he said that he learned it from his father when he was growing up. He noticed that when he would go to the leadership meetings, because uh, his dad was a, a leader in his local kind of tribal council, he would he would notice a couple things. Number one is that they would always sit in a circle and it would be a very communi- community-based. And number two, that he noticed that his dad would always be the last one to speak. And that is super powerful because I think always being the last one to speak gives you a lot more leverage and a lot more power. And when it comes to your job search, putting yourself in a position where you're always the last one to speak is going to give you a lot of leverage and effectiveness with how you're able to help other people and how you're able to identify problems for other people, other companies, and ultimately be able to provide solutions to set yourself apart from the pack, right? Now, what does that mean? Now, of course, you can ask questions. But when I say always be the last to speak. I'm talking about always be the last to give your opinion. Always be the last to offer a solution. If you want to ask qualifying questions, seek clarity, figure out what the problems are, you'll find, and I think you probably already know this, it's just a matter of intentionally implementing this in your job search framework, is that if you're going out there 
selling yourself and pitching yourself and trying to say, this is what I can do for you. These are the problems that I think you have. Uh, this is how I can help you solve those problems. Now it sounds like a sales pitch. People don't trust it as much. I mean, you may get lucky. Uh, you may really find somebody that has a need and it may work. So don't misinterpret that. Um, but think about it this way. Think about the flipping on the other side. If you went to everybody and you just said, hey, this is who I am. This is, you know, I, I'd love to connect with you. I do something similar. I, I'm looking to connect and expand my network with people kind of in the same industry. Uh, I'm, I'm really uh, looking forward to get to know you a little bit. Let me know how I can help you in any way. And when they connect with you, you reach out to them and you say, hey, listen, I, I, I just, I looked over your profile. I saw some things. I got a couple questions for you. What's going on with this? Tell me a little bit more about that. Like dig through their profile, dig through on LinkedIn, dig through what's going on with them and ask them questions specific to them. Start that engagement because, you know, typically our favorite topic is ourself, right? And it's going to be no different. But if you go in kind of thinking about this as a consultant and your job search, not like a job seeker, but you're going in thinking of yourself as a consultant, an individual consultant, and you're just trying to ask the right questions to figure out the pain points, you'll find that people have no problem talking about it all. You just got to know how to ask the right questions. And the only way to do that is to do it. The only way to get better at it is to do it. I'm, I'm a big fan of the statement, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing poorly until you're good at it, right? And so that is that is no different in this situation. You got you to gotta just start engaging with people, start networking with people, start asking great questions, and then make sure that you are always the last one to speak, always the last one to give your opinion, because when you do that, it's going to be much, much more effective, and you're going to see your results on the networking side tick up and, and just ex like just compound beyond anything you could believe. Now, you always hear, you probably, if you're, if you're going around looking for help online, looking for coaching online, you'll hear a lot of the times you're the the 90 percent of the jobs that you're looking for in the hidden market quote unquote well what does that mean 90 percent of the jobs are not posted or advertised so that means they're filled through networking they're filled through private networks private relationships referrals stuff of that nature well so that means stop looking for a job start connecting with people start following these rules and i'm telling you you cannot go wrong so i hope that makes sense um, if you have any questions um, feel free reach out uh, email me chris at careernextagency.com I'd love to help you with any questions you have have any questions or comments or requests for specific topics on a podcast once again I'd love to help and uh, if, if you know anything else I'm here uh, if you found value in this I would really just love it if you could leave a great review a five star review with a, a comment on how this helped you um, also if you didn't like it feel free to be honest with me. I mean, it's uh, I, I, I really am doing this podcast to serve people. I want to be able to help. So be straight with me. Give me give me feedback on what I could do to make this better for you and to help you uh, with your job search. And I look forward to serving. Uh, and also, if you could take a screenshot of, of this podcast and and post it on any social media platform with the hashtag executive job search secrets, uh, I would just really appreciate it. Uh, any support that you're willing to give. So anyway, go out, have a blessed, inspirational day, and I can't wait to talk to you on the next podcast. Are you tired of struggling with your job search? Are you having a hard time connecting with key decision makers or struggling with knowing how to communicate your brand more effectively? Or maybe there's something else holding you back. Either way, our team is here to help and would love to give you a free 30-minute consult to hear about what you're doing, what you're looking for, and give you some advice on how to get there more effectively. All you have to do is go to www.careernextagency.com. We'll talk to you soon. Like what you just heard? Visit c-suiteradio.com. C-Suite Radio, turning the volume up on business.